Let's talk about shooting in low light. And what does that actually mean? Because shooting in low light doesn't mean shooting in darkness. It's a very different thing. And when you think about shooting in low light or a camera that performs exceptionally well when shooting in low light, what's the name or the brand that comes to your head? For me, it's Sony. How would Komodo perform against that camera? We're going to actually look at two different scenes in two very different locations that are lit very differently, but both would qualify, in my opinion, as low light shots. So in the first example, this was a video which I think is really hilarious. If you guys haven't watched it, I'll leave a link so you guys can check it out. It was a video where I was comparing the Red Komodo X to the C70 in a telenovela type style with a lot of banter. I shot this on the Sony a7S III in S-Log3 Cine Gamut using the native ISO, the low native ISO, because as you can see in the scene, there's lots and lots of light. And the reason why I did that was to make sure that I didn't clip any of the highlight information. So I used false color to make sure that I was in fact not clipping any information in the darks or in the highlights and I exposed that way. I used the 24 millimeter prime wide open. And what I want you to focus on is the noise in my sweater, the noise on the wall, how the noise affects Bert's hair, both of our eyes, and frankly becomes distracting enough so that you cannot unsee it. So now that I know what that benchmark is, let's take a look at a very different scene in a much lower lit environment. And this shot was shot on Komodo. So this is the original Komodo, not Komodo X. It was shot at ISO 3200. I used the very affordable 16 millimeter RF lens by Canon. And this is the shot that I was able to get. And what you're going to notice very quickly is that there is no noise. There is enough texture and detail in the dark areas of the image. So this is a 400 year old building where they're processing wood veneers so that they can put them on finished high-end furniture. And that's what this guy is doing. He's going through and basically processing the veneer that will at some point end up on a piece of furniture. Be sure to let me know in a comment if you think that that was an unfair comparison of a low-light scenario shoot between the Sony a7S III and the original Komodo. And did you think that Komodo had an advantage because Komodo was, had more light available to it? Or do you think that the Super 35 sensor, which is a smaller sensor, which this doesn't make any sense to me, a smaller sensor would perform better than a full frame sensor with much larger pixels? And the reason why I'm making this comparison is because I'm going to go through the process of testing the low light capabilities of Komodo X so that I can see just how much better and what those improvements are actually when it comes to the types of projects that I shoot compared to regular Komodo. Because learning how to use the tool is part of the process of getting a new camera for me. If your idea of shooting something in low light is very different than mine, if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment so that when I publish the video of low light capabilities for Komodo X, I can make sure that I include something more similar to what you might expect. If you're interested in that type of content, be sure to subscribe because we're trying to build this community of new wave YouTube people where we're not constantly pushing products. We're asking you to buy something, but rather sharing content, information, and knowledge that allow us all to level up together. Hopefully you guys found this entertaining and a little helpful. Now we'll catch up with you guys on the next one. Take care.